for Midnight Baseball number 59, the world's future time. Okay, I'm playing off of America's pastime. I'm fresh off the World Baseball Classic from Los Angeles, as you may know. And the world's future time is now in sports. It's a free world. It's supposed to be all about democracy. And baseball is a catalyst. Okay, I can't tell you how great it was to be around 50,000 people on the championship night, to be around everybody on Monday, Tuesday, all the fans. It wasn't just the Netherlands and the Puerto Ricans and the United States and Japanese. Those were all great, but uh, Israel fans were there. We had more uh, Dominican fans were there. The world is a great place, and Dodger Stadium and baseball showed that, and it was such an awesome feeling to be there. Okay, I just... That's my excitement. That's where I'm at today with Midnight Baseball. My base, my Midnight Players, I'm back. I love everybody. Okay, if you saw me in Los Angeles, you're new to this channel. Thank you so much for joining. Let's get to trivia. Who is the first ever Japanese-born player to play in the United States Major League Baseball? One, two, three. Mr. Masanori Murakami. If you can believe it, in 1964, he found a loophole in his contract that allowed him to briefly come over to MLB, okay, and play for a year. He worked as a left-handed reliever for the San Francisco Giants between 64 and 65. After that year was up, he had to go back to Japan, okay? So first player ever, Masanori Murakami, you're a trailblazer, props to you. Sometimes we hear about Hideo Noma, who threw at the first pitch for one of the games in the World Baseball Classic with Tommy Lasorda. Shout out to Tommy. But Noma came in 95, who is known as being the gateway to the Japanese coming to America because he was the one that kind of exploited, I guess, more of this contract that was going on. Okay? But anyway, 30 years later, so the 30 year gap, it wasn't Nomo, it was Murakami. That's your tr uh, Japanese baseball trivia with uh, MLB. All right. Uh, a couple more news and notes I got working on. Some injury, big injury in our, in our life. Uh, San Francisco Giants left handed reliever Will Smith. They gave up Phil Bickford and Andrew Susak for him last year during the playoff run. Uh, Will Smith need Tommy John. So Giants bullpen takes a big hit. Giants are going to be struggling this year a little bit, but they've been good the last seven or eight years. they got Mad Bum and Buster Posey, so they should be good, okay? Uh, extensions for some players over the last couple of days. All infielders. Jose Ramirez for the Indians gets locked up for four years. Uh, Rough No Odour with the Rangers gets locked up for five years. Big deal for Odour. So where does that put Jerks and Profar more? I wish Profar could get traded and get in there, but they have Elvis at short, and they've got uh, Odour at second base for a while with the Rangers, and they've got Belcher this uh, another year or so. Will Profar decide to continue to go around the diamond? That has a lot to do with the, uh, the Odour extension. And last but not least, the largest contract ever signed by a player with less than one year service time. Okay, and that's Tim Anderson, the shortstop for the White Sox. White Sox were trying to make a big ploy, give Tim Anderson some money early, avoid a couple years of free agency. I think they have him locked up now through 2023. So if you're a White Sox fan, you like Tim Anderson, get after it, okay, Tim Anderson? Congratulations on getting paid, brother. Back to the World Baseball Classic. Respect for all the fans, all the music. What I loved the most was the music, okay? The music in the environment at the stadium, because they allowed musical instruments in, okay? They allowed fans to go up and down from the lows to the field to the reserve to the top of the deck, which made it more. So if you had friends all over, you could get together. I mean, there wasn't the ushers checking the mini tickets. So Dodger Stadium gave such a good job of creating the atmosphere. I couldn't believe it. It was uh, uh, phenomenal. So if I have one thing to say about MLB is that I want more music and more celebrations, okay? Get maybe teams to do individual songs, you know? We all know this. Everybody clap your hands. <laughs> Come on, everybody. I mean, we know that one everywhere. How about this one? Let's go Dodgers. <laughs> let's go, or how about, let's go Mets. Let's go Mets, or whatever it is, we have like four or five cheers in America for every team. Let's get our own individual cheers, okay? So my, my shout out, not my shout out, my, my advice is for local fan clubs to get their own songs that only get sung in their own stadiums, okay? Make it more individualized, personalized songs that will connect you to your fans and know that only Dodgers or only Cubbies or only certain teams have that fight song. And that's what I would love. That's what I felt with the Puerto Ricans. That's what I felt with a lot of the Japanese fans. Their energy was amazing. And I know as Americans, we have that same energy. We just don't know where to put it, you know, okay? Where am I at here on time? I'm going so good. Let's just keep it going. My shout out. Shout out Dodger Stadium, okay? Whether it be the ushers, the ticket takers, 
Security was amazing. The, the horses were full and full of that. SWAT team was there. I wouldn't be surprised if they had helicopters hanging out in Chavez Ravine back in the hills, okay? They were on point. They were ready to show the world that Los Angeles can host the best events. Chavez Ravine, Dodger Stadium. It's the most beautiful place in the world to host a baseball game. If you haven't been there, do it, okay? One of my favorite stats about this I was talking about over the, over the last week when I was there was Dodger Stadium, in the history of time, has hosted more ticket sales for an entertainment group like the Dodgers than any other entertainment group in the history of entertainment, okay? No, 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 no performance at the Coliseum, no Broadway play, nothing in Las Vegas, not the Yankees because they changed stadiums for a long time. Dodgers Stadium has sold more tickets than any place in the world for, a, for an event, okay? Look it up in the Guinness Book of Rules, it's a fact. Dodgers Stadium, you guys were top notch this last weekend or last couple of days at World Baseball Classic. Amazing job, the atmosphere. I didn't see one fight, I didn't see one scrum. I saw people eating, laughing, jumping. Look at my fans here with this Japanese uh, fan. I mean, there were people everywhere going on in Dodger Stadium hosted to a T, and that's not to be overlooked, okay, the job they did. Trivia, it's gonna be easy. I might have asked it already, I don't even know. Who was the National League MVP last year? I always forget. Okay, maybe I already asked you. He didn't even play in the World Baseball Classic. He was on the roster, but he was on the bench. Tomorrow I'm gonna give you my three most important players in the World Baseball Classic team that brought it home for us, okay? Or uh, maybe just two of them, another one was on Puerto Rico, but some great players that we're gonna talk about. Trivia, NL, MVP from last year. He was on that World Baseball Classic bench, and we brought home the gold no matter what, okay? We're getting ready to take off and send it off another Midnight Baseball. I got my championship belt here. Outside, outside the lines, fancy baseball is my draft tonight. You got fancy questions, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on uh, Facebook. But it's a draft tonight, Midnight Players, RackLife.org, Baseball Gods. I got gratuity, I got gratitude for everybody. Hashtag retired Dodgers 34 and I'm doing my salute off to all the armed service forces. Jim Leland, this is for you. After we won the World Baseball Classic, he said that the World Baseball Classic gold medal was for the, all the armed forces keeping us safe. I agree with you, Mr. Leland. Salute all the armed forces. Salute, let's go. Woo!